it's Sarah and welcome to my crochet channel well today's video I'm going to show you how to make this little bag or case and what it is is a sunglass case it's the perfect on-the-go sunglass case has a little button with a little flap and a little handle and when you're ready to go you can just grab your sunglasses slide them in button them up and take them with you then when you get where you're going or maybe you're just heading to the car and want them in the car you just slide it out unbutton and slide them out and pop them on and you're ready to go and that's why we called it our on the go sunglass case now this is a free crochet pattern on my blog and you can find that link down in the notes underneath this video to make the sunglass case you're going to need about an ounce and a half of your favorite worsted weight or medium weight number four yarn this is red heart super saver it's one i had i don't remember what it's called but i and this one i made probably three or four years ago it's been through the wash it's been through the ocean <laughs> and it's still holding up strong for today's demonstration i'm going to be using this and this is our leftover striped red heart super saver and i made our summer lovin sun hat and i had this ball of yarn left and so i'm going to use that for today's demonstration and then i'll have a matching sunglass case to go with my hat you're going to need a button that's about an inch to an inch and a half and i'm just going to use this little round green one because i think it'll match nicely we're going to be stitching today with our 5.0 millimeter crochet hook and that's an H hook you'll need a needle for weaving in ends and sewing on that button and then of course you'll need a pair of scissors and don't forget a pair of glasses we're going to begin with our slip knot and then we're going to chain 26 chains and I do recommend as I usually do that you chain this beginning chain just a little bit loose I've chained my 26 chains and we're going to begin by placing a double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook one two three four so yarn over go in that fourth chain pull up a loop yarn over go through the first two yarn over and go through the second two now those first three chains will count as our first double crochet and what we're going to do is place one double crochet in each of the chains across this whole project for the most part is stitched in double crochets so it's going to work up really fast one double crochet in each of the chains across I've stitched one double crochet in each of the chains across and you're going to have 24 double crochets and that's because we started in the fourth chain from the hook and those first three chains counted as our first double crochet so we have 24 double crochets we're going to chain three and turn now our chain three on this row and every row will count as our first double crochet so we're not going to stitch in this first stitch we're going to stitch a double crochet in the next stitch and then we'll stitch a double crochet <clears throat> in each of the stitches across so one double crochet in each double crochet across 
and we're working on the body of the bag right now or the case. I completed row two, which is one double crochet in each double crochet across. And again, I have 24 double crochets. I'm going to chain three and turn. And so what we're going to do is for the next 11 rows is repeat row two. Chain three, one double crochet in the next stitch and one double crochet in each stitch across, chain three, and repeat. So we'll be repeating row two for 11 more rows. Once you have repeated row two 11 more times, you're going to have 13 rows of double crochet and you'll have 24 stitches on each row. We're going to take it and fold it in half. And this is how we form the body of our bag or case. After your last row of double crochets, we're only going to chain one and not three. So we've got the two sides together. We're going to go in our first stitch and the first stitch on this side and stitch a single crochet. And we'll do this all the way down the side, stitching the front to the back of our case or bag, whichever you want to call it. So we go through the stitch here, we go through the stitch on this side, and we stitch a single crochet. And we're going to work our way down to the corner of the bag. So I'm just going to continue working down the side of the bag till I reach the corner. I'm stitching one single crochet in each stitch, stitching the front of the bag to the back of the bag, working to the corner. I'm now at the corner. I've stitched all the way down. And so in this corner, there we go, we'll go through and now we're going to stitch three single crochets in the corner. One, two, and three. And we're putting three in there because we want that corner to move smoothly around. And now what we're going to do is the bottom. And when you're stitching that you don't have stitches to put in, it's very important that you stitch in the sides of the stitches and not the holes. And like that one, it might be a little bit snug, but we'll just go into the sides of the stitches. And across the bottom here, there is not a set amount of stitches. You just want to make sure they're close, but not too close because you don't want them, you know, puckering or ruffling up, but not too far apart either. And so you're just going to have to use your creative juices. Watch what you're doing. And it's important, of course, that you stitch the front to the back of the bag so you don't have a hole in the bottom. <laughs> you don't want to lose your sunglasses when you're at the beach or the pool for that matter, or anywhere. All right, so I'm stitching across the bottom, trying to go in through the stitches and not through the holes. Now there might be an occasion where you can't get your hook through and you have to go through a hole and that's understandable, but for the most part, you just really wanna try to stitch in the stitches on the sides there so that you get a nice clean and sharp looking bag. There we 
go. We'll put one more right in this corner. We're going to tie this off. There we go. And I'm going to put my hook down inside my bag. And I'm going to grab that string and pull it to the inside. And then I can weave that in with my needle and this one as well. But we won't do that to the till we're finished with the end. But this is how it looks at this point. You've got basically just a little bag that we stitch together. Now we're going to make the flap and the trim on the top and add the button and, of course, the handle. So now we're going to join our yarn to the top where we have our opening because that's where we're going to slide our sunglasses in. And we're going to evenly single crochet around this top. And again, we want to make sure that our stitches are going into the sides of those stitches and not the holes if at all possible. And like I said, sometimes you may have to put it in a hole if your stitch is too snug or you just don't have a place to put it. But for the most part, just try to put your stitches in the sides of the stitches and make them lay nice and smoothly working around the opening of the top of our bag. Just trying to get them to, to lay smooth and even. And really, when you're doing a edge that has an even row of single crochets, there really isn't a stitch count that you need. It just needs to be eyeballed, trying to make it nice and neat and smooth so that it just really lays pretty. All right, I'll just continue working around, trying to make the edge look nice and neat. Because remember, you're going to be sliding those glasses in and out. We need to have a nice edge so it doesn't catch on the stitches that our bag is made out of, like the double crochets or whatever. We don't want it to catch. We want it to, to just be able to slide smoothly right in our bag. All right, so I'm almost all the way around the tail out of the way there working in those stitches oops there we go i'm going to put one right in that top where we have our single crochet row in there there we go And then I'm going to join to that first single crochet and chain three. All right, so this is going to be the side that we put the flap on, and this is the front. And I've single crocheted evenly around that edge, so now my glasses will slide in and out without getting caught on the edges of my stitches. So we've chained three. And now we're going to place a double crochet in the next 11 single crochets. So yarn over, go in, pull up a loop, yarn over, go through the first two, yarn over, and go through the second two. So we're going to need a total of 12 because we're adding 11 more. So there's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And then I'll chain three. And at this point, because we didn't have a set number of single crochets that we did. You want to look at it and make sure it's nice and even because that's going to be that flap that comes down. All right, so now what we're going to do is we chain three, we're going to turn, 
Our chain three here counts as our first double crochet and then we'll double crochet in the next and stitch one double crochet in each of those double crochets across. And so we'll have a total of 12 because our chain three counts as our first. Make sure you put one in that chain three or you'll have one double crochet short on this next row. All right, so we have another row with 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 double crochets. Now on the end of this second row of our flap, we're not going to chain three. We're only going to chain one and turn. And with the next two stitches, we're going to do what's called stitching your double crochets together or a decrease stitch. So we're going to yarn over. We're going to go right in this first stitch and pull up a loop. Then we'll go in the next one and pull up a loop. You'll have four loops on your hook instead of the three we usually have with a double crochet. Yarn over, go through the first three loops, yarn over and go through the last two. And so what we did here is we decreased by one stitch by stitching our two double crochets together. We're going to double crochet across and then we're going to do another decrease stitch at the end of this row. All right, so now I'm to the last two stitches and I'll do another decrease or stitching two double crochets together. Yarn over, go in that stitch, pull up a loop, go in our last stitch, which is our chain three from the previous row and pull up a loop, yarn over, go through the first three, yarn over and go through those last two. And so now instead of having our 12, we should have 10 because we decreased here and here. So now we're going to chain one and turn. And on this row, we're going to make the button loop. We're going to single crochet in the first five stitches. One, two, three, four, and five. Now we're going to chain eight to make our button loop. Now we're going to go right into that next single crochet and we'll single crochet in the next five. One, two, three, four, and five. So now we've created our button loop. We're going to turn our work to the side. So now we're going to slip stitch down the side of the flap to get back here to the top edge of our bag so that we can form the handle of our case or bag. So we'll just go in pull up a loop, then pull that loop through the loop on our hook, just moving down. And all this is is just a way to get down there to the edge. There we go. All right, so I'm going to join to that single crochet with a slip stitch. And now I'm going to chain 25 chains. I've chained my 25. I'm going to come over here to the other side of my bag. And I'm going to join to that single crochet with a slip stitch. 
And then we're going to slip stitch up the other side of our bag flap. Whoops, my yarn split apart there. There we go. go and then once you've slip stitched up the side you just join to that first single crochet for that row and we'll tie off we'll take our needle and weave this in and I have a couple other ones I need to weave in as well. Didn't leave myself quite enough yarn there, but we'll get the job done. The key to a good weave-in is to go in and out of the stitches and not the holes and to try to get through the fibers of the yarn as well. All right. Clippity clip. Now I do still have a couple of ends I have to weave in, one over here and one down here at the bottom on the inside. But we'll put our handle over. Here's our flap. And now all we need to do is add that button. So here's the button that I chose. I thought it was a good match with this green to kind of brighten everything up. I've threaded onto my needle just some yarn, same as here. And what I'm going to do Lay it out where I want that button to be, which is going to be about right here. And then what I'll do is I'll go through some of the stitches and not the holes, and I'll make a loop. And I do this because I think that it helps it stay secure, especially if you're going to be using a button that you're going to be opening and closing a lot and it's not decorative. All right, so then we'll put our needle through. And I like to try to make sure that I get through stitches of the fabric of the crochet and not the holes. The holes can pull, and you may not get a good fit. It may, it may slide around, and once you start using it, not stay secure. Okay, and I'll keep doing this until I am secure. My needle's getting tight because I'm using yarn. All right, so I'm gonna make sure I get through there. All right, I'm gonna take my hook, I'm gonna pull that other string to the inside. There we go. All right, let's open this up a little bit so you can see. This is the inside. And when I'm sewing on a button, even though it's crochet, I do still tie a knot. And I do what I call three knots, I do one, two and then I do what I call I don't know what it's called I just sort of call it a wrap knot you use both of the strands of yarn that one's a little short I should have left me a little more and you pull it through that hole and tie that off now if you want to add some glue to that knot I don't recommend using hot glue because when it gets cold it can crack and when it gets warm it can melt because it's plastic if you want to add some glue, this is the glue that I recommend. It's Aileen's No Sew Fabric Glue. You can put it on, make a little dab. It takes a little bit to dry. You can use your blow dryer on low to dry it if you want to. But I, I don't usually do it and um, because I think the, the button is nice and secure. So here is my button and my bag. And let's see if my glasses are going to fit. Excellent! Now I have a bag that matches my summer loving sun hat to take with me when I'm out back on a walk at the pool. Anytime I want to take my sunglasses on and off, I've got a bag to slide them right into. <music> 